So before I get started, I want to give a big shout out to Michael Colvin in Fayette, Missouri. This kid who loves dinosaurs, superheroes, his mom and dad, his sister, his grandparents, and of course, his uncle. So, stay tuned. What is up everybody and what is up Evil Dead fans? Now I know the Evil Dead fans are wondering when the Evil Dead 1 cover is coming out. Everything else is done. Unfortunately, we've had a cold spell here. These will be latex covers and you can't let latex freeze. So the only way I can order it is to sign off when I get it, which means I might get a big bucket of frozen latex. So I'm waiting for just like a big long warm spell so I can rush order it to get that done. But they are still gonna be made and available. With this video, we're gonna talk about my son's devil deer and what I do during this time of year. I usually put the props down and just stop doing that kind of stuff because it's kind of a vacation for me from that. So what I do is I hunt. I'm a hunter. I like to hunt. Number one, that's the biggest thing. I like to do it. Number two, we don't buy beef. Everything that I hunt, we eat. The only thing that we buy meat-wise at the store is chicken sometimes and uh, pork. That's really it. Other than that, we don't. It saves us a lot of money. We appreciate it a lot more. We know it's not a nasty processed meat that came from, you know, some other place. It's basically from field to table is what we do here at my house. Definitely don't let, it, let anything go to waste. When it comes to deer, we'll keep the uh, heart, we'll eat the heart. We'll actually keep the testicles, which in a future video, very soon, you will see me eat and cook and the tongue as well. And if the liver is still good and it doesn't get shot, the liver as well. But for us, deer season is over. All of our tags are filled. And now it's on the bird season, pheasant season. That's another reason why we really don't buy a lot of chicken. You know, every once in a while in the summertime, we'll get chicken legs to barbecue, but I actually prefer a nice and fancy just pheasant dish to make. And I actually got two pheasants today. And where I live, it's only legal to shoot roosters, ditch chickens, you know, the males, and you can't shoot the females. So let me show you what I got. So right here are two mature roosters. And I'll show you this one right here a little closer up. The males, you can tell by the coloring of the head and the neck, that's the ring. The females are all brown. So when you're pheasant hunting, you have to identify the bird really quick because they really just run out of a ditch, run out of a coulee or holler, whatever you want to call it, out of brush and fly up and you have to identify that bird instantly. And you can see this one has some talons on the back. The other one, I think has bigger talons than these ones. So what I do with this, I actually breast out this bird and I keep the back legs for the uh, meals that we want with it. Anything extra, uh, I cut up and I give to my dog. He loves it, the gizzards, things like that. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about my son's devil deer. Now, what is a devil deer? A devil deer really is a spike. A lot of people call them spikes. It's just kind of what they're called because they just have a single spike on each side going up. Uh, when it comes to mule deer, if you have a big spike like that, they're usually about a year and a half to two years old. A lot of times they're called forkers. I'll have two on each side. But the genetics of this deer, it just had two big long spikes. And for me, I consider a spike anything about four inches and below. And a lot of times if it's a white tail spike, you can use a white tail doe tag. There is a limit for that. Uh, just because if somebody didn't identify it as a doe, that's what they give them. But this one has seven inch spikes, so it's a devil deer and I have video of that hunt. Now, this is the first hunt where um, he's officially shot one himself without any assistance. He went last year legally. And what I mean by assistance, nobody's helping him aim the gun. Nobody is, you know, if he wounds it, nobody else is actually taking it down. He did it all himself. So this is his actual like legit, legit one. And I know some people are saying, well, why does he need assistance? Well, it's first year, very young. And that was last year, of course. And it's, you know, if a deer's on the run after you wound it, you don't want it to get away and suffer. And, 
you know, let it go to waste because that's happened to a lot of hunters and it's not cool. So you want to make sure that you harvest the deer properly. You want to make sure that you do it the most ethical and humane way possible. So if it's injured, you want to make sure that it's not going to suffer. And I, there's tons of stories of hunters that I know that bug me about letting deer suffer. That's for another day. Ethically is to take the deer that you shot and to use all of it. If you're not going to eat it, give it to somebody who will. Get a process, donate it to a uh, you know food pantry. They take them. Just don't be one of those hunters. Out, they're not even hunters. They're just pieces of shit. Don't be one of those people who shoot a deer and just cut the head off and leave the body because that is unethical and you make hunters look bad. So if anybody does that and they're listening, you can kiss my fucking ass because I have no respect for you and I really hope Fish and Game find you one day and find your ass $5,000 and take your hunting rights away from you because you just fucked up. Because that's disrespectful to the deer and it makes the rest of us hunters look bad. So, if you're one of those people, I don't like you at all. If it's a diseased deer, on the other hand, you need to call Fish and Game. And they will give you the option of keeping the head and using your tag or getting a brand new tag. They will do that most of the time, depending on the state. So, Montana, I know they do that. A friend of mine, that happened to him. He had a deer that was just diseased. And they said, you can keep the hip with the rack and use your tag or get a new tag. And he decided on a new tag because they eat deer all year long. We're gonna talk about my son and his legit deer that he got, the devil buck. So that day we went out and earlier in that season, in the season, he's missed every time. He's missed probably like six or seven deer. That morning we go around this corner and we're tracking this area we've been to like a million times. And there's like a three by three or in some places they call it six point deer, six point buck on a hillside standing there. We're about probably 70 yards away. And he's like, dad, right there. And the communication between me and him is very limited because he has ADHD. So he wears hearing protection because loud noises kind of hurt his ears and like, you know, it's not good. So he just points at him and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I didn't bring binoculars that day, which I should have. I wasn't shooting, I was done. So I was just helping him out. Instead of aiming at that deer, he runs at it. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he can't hear me. And so the deer just looks at him, just runs off. So I catch up with him. I'm like, what are you doing? Come to, come to realize the deer he missed the other day. I told him it was, it was at 50 yards and he missed. And he thought his gun was sighted into 50 yards. I go, no, you're good for 175. And what he's using is a 20 gauge Mossberg 500 slug gun with a scope, which means it has a Sabo or Sabot slug, whatever you want to call it, with a rifle barrel to give it a twist. Same thing as a rifle, but it's a shotgun. And you're limited on distance. He's good 175 with his, I have one too, and I'm good up to 200. If you have the right ammo with the right gun, you can get the distance you need. So anyways, we check a couple more, couple more places and we go around this corner. He's like, dad, points down. And you can see this butt of this deer. And so he shoots, he misses, and two, two other deer pop up. We think they're all three does because they're off at a good distance. He shoots again. All right, he sees the first one, he shoots, and shoots low. And then he shoots at it again, shoots low. And then he does a third shot. I'm like, raise your gun up just a little bit. I thought he was shooting the close one. But he was actually shooting the far one. There. It was about 175 yards. And I'm like, and I see the wadding. It had to be the wadding kind of land in front in the snow on the closest one. And I'm like, dude, you're shooting low, reload. And so I look while he was reloading, and I see that far one, his butt goes down, he goes around the corner. I'm like, oh my God, you hit it. And he's like, I did? I'm like, yeah, I think you hit it in the butt. I'm like, watch, let's, let's go down here where it went around the corner. I was like, a lot of people, they will wait a long time to track. Unfortunately, we're so close to a piece of property, we couldn't hunt. So for it to make a mad dash, this mule deer to the next property is not hard. It'll ha you know, it, it can happen that quick. So I'm like, okay, let's make our way down. And then once we get our close around the corner, those two does that he was shooting at, we're just standing there. And I'm like, 
knowing it's the rut, they only do that for one reason, and that means there's a buck. Because muley does will sometimes step in front of bucks to protect them when they're uh, bitted down with bucks. During the rut, you will have one lookout who watches everything in case a predator shows up. So we go around the corner and the does finally run off and I'll look up the hill and there is that deer he shot. And he ended up shooting it with one bullet right through the lungs and liver. Just good shot, nice kill shot, good and humane. What I'm gonna show you right now is him actually walking onto it the first time. This isn't something we stage where I'm like, we look at him like, oh no, now go, let me film you doing this. So we waited a little bit just to make sure it wasn't, wasn't moving and it was, you know, it passed, it passed away. And uh, he's like, what do we do now? I'm like, okay, go walk up on it. So here's him doing that. That's a buck! Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man! Awesome! <laughs> so you can see his legit excitement with that. You can hear it in my voice too. And I didn't know it was a buck because it's so far away, but when I was filming him with my camera, I, can, I didn't know if it was the cactus. And yes, we do have cactuses up in Montana if it was the antler or if it was an old piece of that cactus. And, and I was just like, that makes sense why the does were sticking around. He tagged it, I fill dressed it, and then he had to drag it back. So I, I just had to carry his gun. And here's the video of that drag. This does look in front of us. Yeah, you spotted him before I did. I guess I do. Oh, why? Then you missed the doe, then you missed the doe, and then you shot a buck. <laughs> Very good. You're almost there. Get over this hill. And then we're almost to the road. The truck's right there. So, yeah, this is an easy drag, dude. <laughs> Why did I go up the smallest hill ever? Leg day. You can take a break. No, no breaks for me right now. No breaks for you, right? I'm almost here. Yeah, dude, I'm worn out carrying your gun for you. Wow. <laughs> and a fanny pack with knives in it. Oh man, I'm hurting. When you get there next week, next to you, I'm in front of you. Dude, you remember how many times you made fun of me? And I'm dragging the deer back, fucking coughing, and go. <laughs> and you're like, why is it so heavy? Is it so heavy, Dan? <laughs> you're yeah, afraid not to make fun of me. <laughs> I'm not making fun of you. I'm just kind of make poking. Almost there, dude. Almost there. Yeah. You're getting there. Another little tiny hill. No. Little bitty one. Don't make it. Remember this spot? No. That's where you unload your gun because you didn't get anything. Now you're walking back with the deer. Yeah. I'm too tired to smile. Take a break. No. I'm like about 20 feet. Then you got to put it in the truck. I'll get it in the truck for you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna help me. You damn right, you're gonna help me. How are we gonna, how are we gonna get it over the fence? Oh, you go you underneath mean? the fence, you take that off. You get it right to the fence, right there. Oh, and then God. you take that off, you get across the fence, and then you drag them across. You can do it. Get it up to the fence. Am I gonna reach through? No, no. Yeah, you however you want. That'll work. Okay, get through. Okay. No. Yeah, where are they at? Oh yeah, two does. Those are the two does that Buck was with. Those are the two does you missed. Good. See, they're circling back around to find that buck. We got you, we got that's you what, bugs. That's what they do in the rut, dude. We got you the bugs. Does, the does will come back looking for the buck. Have fun. The buck is dead right here. There's a big one over there. You can go have sex with him. So yeah, they're going over. That's cool. 
They, they're looking, they're looking. And they'll follow that drag trail because they smell them. So here we go. Jesse's first official, official buck. He didn't need any assistance. Help. No. You got him all by yourself. Not the biggest buck, not the smallest, but the best eating buck. A year and a half to two year old bucks, but the best. Less gaming. Let's gaming this to him. Yo, you know you you got a lot of work ahead of you now. Oh crap! Quite crap! Yep, we gotta take them home, hang them up, strip them down, package the meat. Okay. All right. Right. You ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. So we got to back to the truck and he's super excited. Now you can bring deer to processors. Now what they do is they take the deer, they make it so you can, it's packaged up, you can freeze it, eat it right away, whatever you want to do. But it does cost money and it's starting to get more expensive every year. So I know how to process a deer and I'm like, we're going to do that this year. So it is a lot of work, but at least we know for 100% fact, the deer that we got is the one we're eating. That is a pheasant feather. Anyways, so that's what's nice about it because I did bring a deer one time to a processor and I got the wrong one. It had a BB in it. And I'm like, I don't use buckshot. So this is not mine and it was gross and the way they cut it was really shitty. I'm not gonna name them out, but man, it was bad. But anyways, so we decided to do it here, save some money. It's just a lot of work. Um, we kept the heart, we kept the nuts, or testicles, whatever you wanna say, and the tongue because he wants to try all that and I'm like yeah we'll definitely keep them the heart and if you want to eat the nuts yeah we'll cook them up so here's us processing it and I'm going to talk a little bit about the back straps and other things with the deer that are really good to eat and what he's doing and also I made sure that I made a European mount out of his deer the deer head which means I take oxyclean and you know boil water and trim it up all the meat off the head and then boil it and then get all the excess off so I can put it on a board and let him put it in his room. Because I have my wall of racks and deer antlers and he needs to start his own. Because I was like, you're gonna put it on my wall? He goes, no, I'm gonna make my own. I was like, all right, that's cool. And I'm glad he didn't get a massive buck because if he would've got a massive buck, and I told him this, if that happens, don't gauge every hunt by that huge deer because that means you'll never get another one again it's not about the rack it's about the hunt and it's about providing and doing it the right way that is a happy dog he gets all the extra scrappings from the deer that you got today jess got the back straps off still gonna work on the hind legs working on the burger right now Good job, dude. Yeah. Great job today. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, proud of you, dude. Thank you. But we're gonna get back to work. So next step, what we're gonna do is we're going to rib it out, get the neck, and then I'll end up cutting the steaks out of here, the roast, that up there, and more burger. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting up the back straps. This is a backstrap piece right here. You can butterfly it, but sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I keep them, sometimes I leave them longer. It depends on the size of the deer. This is uh, about a year and a half, two year old deer, right around there. So where the backstraps are, are right here. Now, the two pieces that are found in here are considered the most tender, and then the backstraps. Now, if you have back straps, I've got here on my, got the deer ear mans, and all this gets washed out before we package it. Do not deep fry these things. I've seen a guy deep, uh, well, it was that dude from uh, Buck Commander Willie, and he's from Duck Commander. He was like deep frying, sticking mushrooms and shit on there. I, I know. I don't think he likes the taste of back strap. <laughs> and, and the thing is, this is like the filet mignon of the deer. So the best way to cook it is in a pan. It's hot with butter, oil, garlic, um, certain spices. It's made medium rare, but this is a prime piece. You having fun, Jess? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And this is your deer? Yeah. Finally. Yeah, but still, still deer season. We're done though. Yeah. 
Now it's bird, pheasants. pheasants. I've been wanting it. You've been wanting to go for birds? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Too, too many Mars. Oh, we went for birds, didn't see very many, and then deer season started, and then all of a sudden we see a shit ton of birds. Yeah. All over the place. Like, oh, well, we gotta get out of there now. Well, yeah. it's getting colder. Better time of year to to go after those. Fat. Yep. So we have the skull bleached and all the meat off of it. What he's doing is taking the tape off of the horns because if you don't tape them up, the uh, OxyClean will bleach it. So we tape up the horns instead of having to repaint it. I've seen repainted horns. So fast. Some of them are really bad, <laughs> but some of them are really good. But uh, he's got to find that starting point. Yeah. But that's why you got to tape it up. So if it bleaches in any way, the horns, you, you can touch it up easily with acrylic paint. You like the natural? Me too. I'm squabbles. As you can tell, I like the natural too. None of these were repainted. They're just taped up. Yeah, but you're excited. It's like opening up Chris's present. No, I'm going to have a scramble to It's like opening your presents at Christmas. I don't know how to wrap presents. A million, gosh, damn, pieces of tape. Small, itty pieces. Okay, it works. So here's the final product. As, as you can see, it didn't bleach the horns at all. And it looks really good. I will have to cut down the back here to mount it to the board because I do all my mounts. Not all the not all the ones that I've ever done. I or that I have on the wall that I, I've done them all because I haven't. I've done most of them. But it's gonna look cool because when it's finally mounted, it's gonna look like that sticking out. So that's kind of cool. So you can still have, if you tape it up right, you can still have that blood, if you have any blood on the horns from the drag or anything. It's kind of neat. This one has some broken tooth down here, which is cool. It's different. So you're done for the year. Finally. <laughs> I'm proud of you though, man. You hunted hard. And this is what you came up with with a great shot. Yeah. Okay. And the freezer is full. And you have a mount, and we already got a lot of dog food, yeah. and we have food for the year. Yeah. So, thanks again, buddy. I'm very proud of him, very happy, and he was so happy to tag out. And I'm like, hey, you wanna get a white tail doe tag? He's like, nope, I'm done, I wanna go for birds. I wanna go for pheasants. And I'm like, all right, we're gonna do that. And we follow the rules in Montana on pheasants, it's three a day. You can only hold nine, and which means in the holding process, in your fridge or your freezer, you can only have nine at a time. So if you have nine, you're done until you start eating them. The same thing with conservation. It limits that. It limits how much you can hunt versus going out and having a freezer like full of like 40 or 50 of them. So it's, I think it's good. I know a lot of people don't understand it. It's kind of weird, but in the long run, if you're limited, other ones can live on, they can repopulate. And like I said before, it just limits how far diseases and things can happen between animals. You get too many of them together, that disease can just really wipe out a whole huge population of any kind of animal. With conservation departments, it's not about decimation. So respect your local conservation department because they're doing the right thing. I'm just saying that's true. If you want an out-state tag anywhere, yes, it costs you money, but that is part of it. So, until next time, and when I eat deer testicles on video, you guys stay groovy.